So with that, we'll begin. Um, oops. <laughs> so our agenda today is real simple. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick uh, two or three slide overview of Infor. I'm sure you know all about them. Uh, and then we're really just going to dive into the product and talk about the product in a fair amount of detail. And then hopefully we'll have about five minutes of questions. And my goal is to not occupy more than 30 minutes of your time today. So a quick uh, overview of Infor. If you don't know already, um, Infor has 73,000 customers globally. They are in over 200 con countries. They are, uh, as of last year, 3.1 billion in revenue with 14,000 employees. And their overall vision is to provide a internet-based solution that integrates all their products around verticalized solutions that have a, a compelling user interface and, and consumer-grade experience that is beautiful to look at. And we're going to talk a little bit about how they do that. Uh, with the CRM product specifically, we're seeing uh, uh, that happen in every wave. It's getting better and easier to use across all the products. Um, so this, and the goal of this is to create a cohesive strategy for fueling growth to benefit um, the customers. Now, um, one of the things that uh, is great about uh, Infor is they have a design group uh, that is called Hook and Loop. It's about 200 people in Manhattan. And Hook and Loop's sole goal within Infor is to look at all the products and make them easier to use. And so you'll see I have some slides of the next release, the current release. We're going to see most slides from the current release, but I'll show you some next slides from the next release. Next release being uh, in about two months this year. And uh, you can see how they're helping it uh, make the product look, e make it easier to use, uh, much more elegant interface, uh, and really uh, have a good, clean look and feel so that it's you get information quickly out of it. Infor also has another group uh, called Infor Dynamic Science Lab. Uh, this is about uh, 150 people from MIT. Uh, they're based in Boston, uh, actually in Cambridge. And this group's sole design and sole purpose is to provide analytic information based on uh, mathematical analysis of your data. So you can you can find information that you didn't know existed, and and for example, um, you can see that uh, um, you know they use all these different techniques <laughs> to help uh, find information, and what they really do is bring science to help customers find out what they don't know, and we're going to talk a bit on how that works. The objectives of the science lab is to be uh, focused on building groups that span um, using different techniques that span the entire Infor product. So it's really wonderful about what they've done with the science lab is when they're looking at ERP information and CRM information to provide much better analysis. And I have slides at the end that are going to show you some of the stuff that's coming out literally uh, this month inside of Infor CRM that will help you do that. So um, that's my quick overview on Infor. And now we're going to talk a little bit about Infor CRM. So the Infor CRM is really part of a larger set of functions called the Infor Customer Experience, or CX. CX is made up of Infor Marketing Resource Management, Infor Interaction Advisor, Infor Outbound Marketing, obviously the Customer Relationship Management, Configure Price Quote, CPQ, and interactive service management. And they all work together today uh, to provide you a complete 
picture of your customer. Um, so I'm going to start over here with the marketing uh, resource management. Oops, I was trying to do that. Um, what happened? I apologize. Uh, I have very 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 touchy mouse here. So um, the the in for marketing uh, resource management. What that does is it takes the campaigns that are inside of Infor CRM and allows you to create a budget and a plan for a marketing campaign. It allows you to align resources, whether those resources are internal resources or external resources. It creates essentially a project plan for marketing. It lets you put together controls on content. So that if uh, someone wants to, one of your sales reps wants to send out a personalized brochure letter, you can control what that personalized brochure or letter is going to say because it has that content control functionality and it also has review functionality, which means that if one of your sales reps wants to send out a personal letter that is outside the, con the content that they're supposed to send out, we can route it to people internally in marketing to make sure the messaging is consistent um, and control really the type of communications you have coming out of your company. And that is the Infor uh, MRM uh, high level description. Interaction Advisor is a little different. What it does is, and you've probably seen this where you've got an ad. Uh, maybe from Nordstrom's uh, is a good example. That's the ones I always get. And when you click on it, that ad always seems to have something that you like. Um, and what Interaction Advisor does is it actually sends out emails, and instead of act with a with a generic title, where the body of the email is actually an image, and based on whether you click on that image or not, determines what image you're going to see in the future. So if I'm selling somebody uh, a, a particular product and we know based on how they act in previous emails that they click on you know, information about hammers, that the next time you send them an email, it's going to be about hammers until they buy one from you and then it will be on the next thing we think is related to hammers. And that is really what Interaction Advisor does. It lets you drive a, a media campaign uh, to your customers through email where every email is personalized based on the customer's buying habits uh, and or potential buying habits for like things if so so if they buy if they already own a hammer we're going to try to sell them a nail and that's exactly what interaction advisor does outbound marketing is the piece that actually works with IA to send out uh, um, uh, send out campaigns and determine whether people are doing clicking on those campaigns, whether they're coming back to your website, what they're viewing on your website. And so now we're at CRM. Once we've marketed to those customers and we've got them coming back as leads, CRM helps us manage that lead through the campaign management modules, helps us manage the our customers through our Salesforce automation, provides customer service and support capabilities, allows us to do activity management, whatever our sales rep doing, provides analytics, and of course integrates with marketing automation, and integrates with business intelligence, which we'll talk about later. And it also does things like quoting using Enforce CPQ. So the CPQ product lets us, when the, when the sales process gets to the point where we want to do quotes, CPQ allows us to do advanced quoting inside a CRM, it allows you to route that quote to different people internally for approval. If you're asking for, um, uh, if you're asking for discounts that are greater than expected, um, uh, you can also uh, um, produce and insert different types of, of uh, graphics inside the quote, uh, as well as um, we we can uh, put in uh, what we call. Uh, uh, inclusion or exclusion. So, for example, if I'm uh, buying a TV, 
through my quote, it'll recommend that I get brackets to all the TV and cables that connect it to my cable box. That's the things that CPQ does. It ensures that whenever someone sends a quote out, that the quote is accurate and all the appropriate parts are there. And then finally, after we've sold it, we have a service management module, and InforCRM interacts with InforISM to create uh, to do contract management, to manage service requests, to uh, dispatch and schedule workers, and to do work order management. Um, I don't see any questions. We're going to move on. Oops. And so all of this, obviously, uh, Infor Product Suite addresses the current and potential uh, needs of your customers. And so inside the Infor CRM product itself, here are the major areas that it does. First of all, from a sales perspective, we have um, CPQ, we have gamification and collaboration, we have email uh, campaign management and lead scoring, and this is supported by contact and accounts, opportunities and pipelines, sales process, activity and sales library. On the marketing side, we, we have strategy, planning, budgeting, digital marketing automation, uh, segmentation, which is the process of uh, analyzing your customers based on things about them and putting them into uh, segments so that we can campaign more effectively against those people. Uh, we have uh, nurturing campaign technology, loyalty analysis, and that's done through our campaign management campaign activity tools. And then in support, we have a knowledge base and a field dispatch service, uh, and that is supported by our case management. We have a return and defect module. We have contracts, an SLA, and a knowledge base. All of our CRM functionalities are supported through reports, analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. And we have dashboards, uh, triggers, uh, segmentation, and data science, all these different things are available, and we're going to walk through those in a, a, a small amount of detail here. So we provide a com comprehensive suite just in the CRM side, full, full of features and capabilities. So here, one thing that CRM does really well is it is works the way you do. It is everywhere you are. So here is an example of our Outlook plugin for CRM. And when I'm on uh, Jeff Hanrahan, which that really isn't Jeff, but it's a nice picture. Uh, my Infor CRM uh, X bar, as we call it, allows me to look at everyone on that email. So you can see that Dave Wallace and Kevin Dragu is on the email with Jeff. And here's information about Kevin and Dave right inside of Outlook. And I can go and send that, that person an email. I can uh, look up information, I, I schedule an activity. I can create a calendar event for them. I can uh, you, I can uh, uh, have an activity. Look at their look at their activities, pending activities. Look at history. Look at notes. Uh, pull up my dashboard specific. I can actually do more system functionality. I can record that email. I can do lots of things right from this one little dashlet here. What's interesting though is that same view is available in mobile devices. So here's my iPad view. And here, again, you can see different companies, all the different functions that you'd expect in your CRM are right in your iPad. And it's also available on my mobile. It looks very similar all across the board. And uh, I don't know why that did that. I apologize. I'm going to go back one more slide. Um, and so you can see everybody's, uh, it looks similar. So we, the XPAR information flows into the iPad version, it flows into the iPhone version. And here is the web version. So all three versions of the product have the same information easily available. Now, um, this is one of our new dashlets. This is actually the, the hook and loop uh, has done this. And so this is what, you, what this is supposed to show is the importance of the different types of dashboards or landing pages you can get. So we have sales, marketing, service, support, uh, different, uh, different types of dashboards. Here's an example. I'm a salesperson. I'm Lee Hogan, the salesperson. Here's my sales dashboard, and I can have lots of dashboards. So this one happens to be my productivity analysis, but you can see I already have a ranking, a one loss, a pipeline, a sales forecast, sales trends, historical data. Um, 
and sales by uh, geography all available to me with with uh, dashboard items that are are, are actually uh, allow me to drill in so I can actually pull in two quarters, see all the data, or I can click on this view here and drill in and see all the phone calls, or just highlight these two people over here, Barb and Brian, and just look at their information. And you can see also I have some ability to filter on the side here. That is a personalized dashboard, and everyone can have their own personalized dashboards, or they can be uh, standardized across the entire organization. Here's some more examples of dashboard personalization. We have a welcome page. Um, which just gives you sort of static information. Uh, my pipeline, uh, maybe different things I have to do today for my team, potential sales, a list of people I need to call, that type of stuff is available. Um, the, other, the, the other ability here is I have uh, my iPhone Android Windows, which is completely configurable. Uh, when I configure uh, the Windows client, uh, or the web client rather, um, I also configure the uh, uh, mobile client as well in the same tools, and so I can take and put custom fields or custom entries on my uh, my mobile solution. So here's an iPad version of of the same information. We also have uh, incredible server side Outlook uh, and Gmail integration besides XBar. So I have the ability not only to do uh, the XBAR stuff that we talked about earlier, but I can have an email box here, and I can, you can see here, I can just say record that to history. Uh, I can also monitor Gmail and Exchange, so any things coming through the server can be uh, matched up on email address and saved appropriately. I have uh, uh, sales tools in my system. Um, for example, I can manage my sales team more effectively. I can implement best practices. Here's an example of an analysis of sales tools analyzing forecast. Uh, I have a whole bunch of reporting tools as well. So I have dashboards. I have lists. I have reports that can be mailed off uh, uh, to different people or distributed on a timely basis. I have uh, the I have built-in KPIs. I have built-in dashboards. I have built-in analytics. Uh, I have analytics that across multiple data sources. Now this gets really interesting because what next slide we're going to talk about is how we do integration. But through the Ion engine, I can take ERP information and CRM information and mash that up into analytics. So I can look at things like how many opportunities do we have where we don't have a product in the inventory things like that. Um, and so we do that through ION. And so this is sort of the quick overview of ION. ION takes CRM data, it takes your uh, uh, ERP information, it mashes it up into a database and lets you run analytics on it through Infor's BI tools. And uh, our Infor CRM is already integrated with all these different Infor ERP tools today. So right out of the gate, uh, we have already connections for SXEA+, LN, Sightline, M3, LX, ISM, uh, Sun, S21, Visual, XA, and so on. And there's, they're keeping, they're adding new ERPs all the time. And what's really interesting about this is what we integrate. So we can move customer data in both directions, which means if someone changes the customer data in the ERP, we can see that change happen in the CRM. If someone changes the phone number in the CRM, we can move that, and that's optional by the way, and back into ERP. We also have contact information, bi-directional, bill to and ship to, pay from, quotes and sales order, bi-directional. From the ERP to the sales rep, the sales rep we can see receivables, invoices, shipments, returns, items, location, suppliers, persons, code defs, contracts, assets, and incidents. So you can see there's a lot of information out of the ERP that is coming and now in the hands of your sales team. And again, that's optional based on security. Uh, but this is just incredible what we're able to do now with the, by connecting the systems together. Um, further, um, we have uh, the ability to uh, look at um, the invoice data in CRM. So these are actually CRM screens. And you can see here's an invoice header and below is invoice detail. And then we just click on one of those and we can actually see you know, the product, the product description, the quality, 
the quantity rather from from the detail line item of that invoice. Same thing with the orders. We have an order module inside a CRM. ERP uh, details, we can pull that up and look at all the detail information around that order. Now once financial data gets into CRM, guess what? It goes to mobile. And so that same information that we have in ERP is now available through the mobile. So we have order information right down to shipping information is available. So as a sales rep, I can go into a customer. I can quickly see what orders are pending. I can see where those orders are in process and shipping and being delivered. I can look at their 30, 60, 90 and see if they owe us money. Um, I can, yeah, we can see if any, any information financial as a sales rep literally before we walk in through our mobile application. And we take that information directly uh, out and we can also put those in uh, our KPIs and our dashlets so we can look at open transactions and new transactions and financial snapshot at a customer perspective on mobile. This is our configurator tool that's inside of Infor CRM today. Um, and so it allows us to create a quote and do simple configuration using the CPQ logic that Infor has in Infor CPQ. And so one of the great things we can do inside of the product is we can, uh, for example, create a quote. Uh, we, can, we can take different images of parts and drop those in. We can make uh, uh, price decisions based on quantity because we pull in that information from the ERP. Um, and we can actually put in CAD drawings inside and develop quite complex quoting inside a CRM. Now, the other thing that's really super valuable here is ION. And so one of the things that Infor CRM works with is ION to create views of information across your entire enterprise. So, for example, uh, ION workflow, not, and this is different than every other CRM. Uh, I've worked with a lot of CRMs in my life. Most CRMs work with a workflow that works on data that's only in CRM. In ION, uh, I work with data that is uh, across, um, ac uh, works with data that is across all products. So uh, I can look at ERP information and CRM information fire off workflows. So for example, if someone is placing, has an opportunity for a product that's not available, we can create a to-do for someone in um, uh, through the ERP system to say we might need to look at making this part or making this hot object. We also have event management that can work across all products um, and obviously we have the ability to connect to other applications besides our own and we have this very cool administrator tool that lets us look at every workflow and where they're at. Um, we also have incredibly uh, Exchange and Gmail uh, integration, so we can sync contacts. Besides email processing, we can sync contacts to CRM calendar and tasks. Now, which is nice about this is that if you're using Outlook, Exchange, or using Gmail as your corporate email system, and I'm exchanging stuff in CRM, I, that actually comes into my mobile phone as well. So the stuff in my mobile phone will sync with Gmail, which will that then sync back into CRM. So tasks generated inside a CRM can be flown right to your normal mobile phone. Uh, so I have an iPhone, so my tasks would sync with my tasks in CRM. And that's a real powerful tool. Um, the other thing I just wanted to show you again is the flexible workspace. So here's an example that anything that we make in one space will move to the rest. I know I'm pressed for time here. Um, we also have some information. These are some. This is the new view of the web. We have a leaderboard now that came out in the most recent release uh, that allows you to do analytics. You can publish. You can. Uh, pu it's the start of game, what we call gamification. So we can uh, have salespeople compete using the leaderboard. Um, with that leaderboard, can be pushed to mobile. Uh, we also have the ability for people to chat, like uh, Facebook internally. Uh, we call it Mingle, and I can take information out of CRM 
and drag it into Mingle. So if I have a, an important pipeline or report that I want everyone in the corporation to see, I can literally take it out of CRM and push it right into Mingle and have started a discussion about like why are why, why do we have not enough leads or why did our our sales uh, clo not closing enough. Um, this is just another example of the new look and feel that will be out in the uh, uh, fall uh, December uh, release. And here's a detailed account screen. You can see uh, how that looks as well. I'm sorry, this thing mouse is very te temperamental. Um, and then um, finally here you can see you know that what we've done on the, when we, in the mobile device here, one of the things we've really focused on is making it uh, situationally aware. So here's an example of how as you're going through a sales process, the information request to you changes. And this is based on our hook and loops design of the process. So if I'm a salesperson out in the field, it only asks for the information you want at the time while you're at the appropriate stage of the sales process. And that's all configurable by uh, you. Again, another example of how we have filtering. So we have the ability, so here's an example where I have 2231 accounts, but I can create a filter on things like city or account manager, and I can only need to push 733 to my actual mobile device, so I'm not overloading the mobile. Any type of filtering that happens inside of my web browser moves to my both XBAR and my mobile device. And then uh, the last couple things, um, we have Sky Vault, which is um, um, Infor's collection database. So we take information from ERP, CRM, uh, asset management, uh, um, uh, and other Infor products. We put them in Sky Vault, and we can do operational reports, statutory reports, um, industry analysis, financial performance management, uh, government's risk and compliance. And from that, we can do uh, certain types of analytics using our uh, data science information, such as lead scoring. Who is the most likely person to buy today? And, and also, what's the best way to contact them? I'll look at my data and see how do we contact that person? What's the, do they respond to emails? Do they respond to phone calls better? What is the next likely purchase? I can look at purchasing trends of customers that are like a customer and based on what other people have bought, and they, we can say this is the most likely product that they were going to buy next and tell you that. And we can also look at based on how customers are behaving, uh, particularly through interactions, whether they're at risk of leaving us, and we can actually pre preemptively tell you what to do to prevent them from leaving you. And again, here's an example of, of one of our views inside of CRM. So this is a customer view, and you can see we recommend that he buys this drill because that's the most le likely purchase he's going to make. And I want to thank you for your time. Uh, if Are there any questions right now? I'm going to open up the audio section, I think. Muted. I think I just muted everybody. Sorry about that. Hey, Deneen, can you unmute everybody? Yes, I think so. Yes. So any questions from any of the attendees? Uh, I, Sam, it's Shelley. I just want to say if anybody would like to see a detailed demonstration, you can just email me and we can coordinate it with Sam. But thank you very much, Sam. Thank you, Shelley, for giving me the opportunity. And if you can, if you have any questions, please take them to Shelley. And she will uh, contact me and we can coordinate a phone call. Great. Thank you. Thanks and everybody being, for attending. This is being recorded as well, so we're going to send the Shelley you the recording. Okay, thanks. Thanks, guys.